welcome to Midnight's Edge After Dark. Now, you're probably familiar with Rob Gallo, the voice of Midnight's Edge, but if you don't know, he does have his own YouTube page. So after this video, why don't you go on over there and check it out and subscribe. This video you're about to see is actually on his page, but then following the video is a brand new roundtable follow-up with Rob, Andre, and myself, Tom, talking about Dune. So enjoy Rob's video and then stick around afterwards for a little extra. Uh, really? We're going to try this again. In case some of you hadn't heard, on November 21st, it was announced that Legendary Pictures had acquired the rights to Frank Herbert's science fiction... Um masterpiece dune more recently on february 1st several outlets reported that arrival and sicario director delis villeneuve had been attached to the project now look i ordinarily don't like begrudging what someone else likes or enjoys you like what you like and after many years of people including family members waiting for my taste to change i'm not about to give anybody shit for what they like with that being said are we really going to go through with this again this is going to be the third attempt at making a movie out of this book and i really can't help but think that they're completely and utterly misguided in their efforts I've been trying to read the first novel of Dune, and I have to say that I really don't see a movie here. Now, I should say that I'm not finished with it yet. This has been an absolute chore to read. I'm roughly 500 pages in, and with about 300 to go, it's not getting any better. It's slow, it's tedious, the characters have very little depth to them, and the story doesn't seem to have any real point other than the young son Paul Artreides being some sort of space Jesus. And please spare me the whole, well, it's just too cerebral for you. Just because something is long, tedious, boring, and drawn out doesn't mean it's deep. It's really saying something that Dune is a very dry book, especially considering that it takes place in a desert. For all the world building that many town is being phenomenal, it doesn't help much that if the characters and the story in that world aren't very interesting to begin with. And let's consider for a moment that back in 1965, Frank Herbert couldn't get this thing published in the first place. He had to go through a publisher named Chilton. For those of you unfamiliar with that name, they primarily publish auto repair manuals. So to sum up, yeah, Dune... Not a fan. Now, I understand why there are some who are fixated on bringing this book to the big screen, especially now with the success of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Naturally, they see any long-running property as an opportunity to turn it into a cinematic universe, and no doubt that's where the bell went off. Even I was guilty of this a few videos back when I was talking about Hollywood remakes. At the time, however, I hadn't even made an attempt to actually read Dune. Now that I have, while I'm not against it per se, I'm of the persuasion that we don't need to go down this road yet again. And yet Hollywood doesn't seem to agree. They still think there's a movie somewhere in this. Back in the 70s, Alejandro Jodorowsky was the first to attempt to make a cinematic version of Dune. His vision at the time was deemed too expensive, as the original script was said to be over 14 hours long. In 1984, David Lynch's version of Dune was lambasted as one of the worst movies of that year. With a budget of $40 million, the film only made $30 million. Film critic Gene Siskel said of Dune, Some of its special effects are cheap, surprisingly cheap, because this film cost a reported $40 to $45 million. Keep in mind that Siskel was saying this about a film that was released only one year after Return of the Jedi, which comparatively had a budget of $32 million. The film was so poorly received that director David Lynch demanded his name removed from any future releases. On many television screenings of the film, his name is replaced by director Alan Smithy, a Hollywood pseudonym that is normally associated with directors who are embarrassed by their work and wish not to sully their reputation. In 2008, the rights to Dune landed with Paramount, and Hancock, Friday Night Lights, and Battleship director Peter Berg was brought in to make a big screen adaptation. After a year, he was out, and Taken director Pierre Morel took up the project in 2010. A year later, in 2011, Paramount dropped the idea altogether. All of this brings us to now. For all intents and purposes, it seems that many are so hell-bent to make a movie out of Dune that they are ignoring the one glaring problem with the source material, which is this. There was an episode of Archer where Pam went back to her hometown for her sister Edie's wedding. Edie, being naturally mean-spirited and never having treated Pam with any sort of respect, said that Pam looked like 10 pounds of in a 5-pound bag. That, in a nutshell, encapsulates the problem with Dune. There's far too much material to squeeze into a two and a half hour movie, and most of that material doesn't translate well because it's primarily the world building. Making that into a movie would be pointless unless you were making a BBC style documentary, Planet Arrakis. By the time you strip away the world building, you're left with the politics and the Space Jesus story, and uh, you know what? Fuck it, I'm not interested. The point is this. There's not a good movie here, no matter how hard you try, because it was never intended to be turned into a movie. You can, however, make a decent television series out of this, a la Game of Thrones or The Walking Dead. 
Back in the 70s and 80s, you were really handcuffed to the movie format if you wanted to do something as big as Game of Thrones or Dune. Now you have things like HBO, Netflix, and even Amazon Prime. That opens up a lot of avenues for longer form storytelling. That's where you can take your time to develop characters in a way a two and a half hour movie doesn't allow you to. Dune as a television series has already been tried. Back in 2000, the Sci-Fi Channel made Dune, and three years later, Children of Dune. Both series were the highest rated programs ever to be broadcast on the Sci-Fi Channel, and both series even won an Emmy. So, can you make Dune into a movie? No. Can you make Dune into a television series? Probably. So do us all a favor and let's give this a pass as far as a movie is concerned this time. You can thank me later. Next episode, something completely different. Maybe. I haven't decided yet. See you next time. Yeah, I know the clock is ticking, but the meds are gonna kick in. When my pilot light shines, pilot light shines, pilot light shining bright. Unfortunately, Rob and I have gotten to about the same place in the movie about two or three times each, and I just, I, I, I want to get into it, but it just, I don't know what it is about the movie itself that turns me off. I don't know. I just donated my, my copy of the, of the book to the my local public library, actually. So I'm... Did you finish it? <laughs> no, no, I didn't. I said, How far I, I, did you get into it? 550 pages. Of I said 800, of, 900, 1,000? I don't remember. Yeah, right about 800, actually. Roughly about 800. Yeah, I might pick it up again at some point, but I was just like, I, I can't do this anymore. I just can't. <laughs> yeah. How far did you get into it, story-wise? Like, what was the last thing that happened? The last thing I remember happening is Paul Artridis kills the other guy in the fight with the Fremen. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. So really early. So basically, uh, this would be in book two, after they have just escaped the Harkonnens and he and his mother are fleeing and they get into the fremens and they have to fight this one guy yeah 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 so that's, that's how far it. you got that's it yeah that's i i couldn't do anymore i just couldn't do it so <laughs> like basically I said, you got like half an hour into the movie that's it oh for <laughs> god's sake one of the things i i kept i keep saying now is that it, because all their technology was replaced by people who just consumed the spice and do the same jobs as as their computers used to do. I was like, okay, so what's the message here? Drugs make you smart? I mean, no, actually, I can tell you what the message was there because you know what I did this weekend? What did you do? I saw Dune, but here's the but. I did not see the shortened two hour version that was in theaters and that you have likely seen. And I also didn't see the three-hour TV version. And this is the version that David Lynch disowned. And the reason he disowned it was that he wasn't in charge of putting the deleted scenes back in. But mostly it was because of the prologue. Because the, um, the movie had the problem that people didn't really understand that there was too much going on in too short a time. So they made this animated prologue an animate that is pushing it. Really, what it was was a bunch of stills. Kind of like what we do here at Midnight's Edge. Mm -hmm. But they had a budget, so they had no excuse. Well, we do it to avoid copyright, too, yeah. <laughs> well, exactly. They had they didn't have that, uh, that excuse because they had someone just narrating over pictures. So basically, they made like this introduction that you can find on YouTube. Basically, that just reads quickly the story of what has happened in the Dune universe and gives you the basic setting. And... It's really quick, it's really rushed, it's not all that impressive, and then you go into the story, and there's more scenes added back in, which David Lynch had no control over. So he disowned the movie, which is why the TV version of the movie is directed by Alan Smithy, yes. which was the usual name used for directors who, for one reason or another, did not want to be associated with their movie. So he was fine with the theatrical cut, because even if it wasn't the movie he made, it was a cut that he could kind of stand behind. But the TV cut was made without his involvement, so he took his name off that. And then he has refused to go back to it any time since, despite being offered to do so several times. However, fans have done the job anyway, because a bunch of deleted scenes, even many that weren't included in the original, or rather the TV version of Dune, has been reinserted into various fan edits. And this weekend, the version of Dune I saw was the fan edit called 
Dune, the third stage edition. And that is basically a fan edit, which has added nearly all scenes back into the movie. And not just added them back into the movie, they've completed the effects. For instance, a problem with the TV version was that in the reinstated scenes, the eyes weren't blue. So that the characters would have the blue eyes in one scene, and then there would be like 10 minutes of a deleted scene with normal eyes, and then they would continue with their blue eyes. Again, another reason why David Lynch disowned the television version. But here they have manually completed the effects, so it's blue eyes and everything throughout. Music added in. It's really, really well done. And the thing that caught me with this was, okay, this version is now a hell of a lot longer. You know how long it is? Well, it's got to be at least four hours. I was going to say, if the other one was three, yeah. The TV version is about three hours. This is three and a half hours long. By contrast, the movie version, the theatrical version, the one that you have seen, was two hour, ten minutes, something yeah. like that. And just like imagine that that means that more than an hour's worth of footage have been taken out of the movie. And you saw the difference between Batman v Superman, the ultimate edition, and Batman v Superman, the theatrical version. Yeah. And that was just 20 minutes or so. Well, this is like almost a whole entire movie. Exactly. They've taken out something with the, almost a runtime of the Dark Tower has been taken out of the movie. Right. If you were to see that version of the movie, do you think that you maybe would have a different impression of it? Uh, hard to say. <laughs> it really is. Yeah, I'd have to say it depends on how it's all handled because I, I mean, it's been so long. Cause I tried watching it once on VHS probably 20, 25 years ago. And then when, when the first DVD came out, it was one of the earlier ones I rented and I couldn't get past like the first 30 minutes or so. I just, I don't know what it was. But yeah, I mean, I was interested. I wanted to get interested, but I guess it just wasn't what I was picturing. So I guess if it if if the lead in into the story works, I'm one of those guys where if you get me within the first 15, 20 minutes, I'll give it a half hour at the most usually. And if it just doesn't get me, then I'm done. If it does that, if it manages to do that much, then I'll, I'll be in for the long haul. I'll stick around for the whole movie then. If it actually gets me interested in the story and the characters and what's going on and I'm not completely lost. My big problem is that as I was reading it, like i'm reading it i'm saying come on come on come on come on something happened come on do something it's just it's just like nothing happened for for 250 pages nothing happened kind of like the lord of the rings yeah yeah then there's a murder and then okay there's a murder okay now we're talking then they go right back to nothing happening that's my that's my biggest that's my big problem I'm like it just seems like Frank Herbert fell in love with the sound of his own voice and didn't actually think, hey, maybe somebody is actually going to want to read this thing. So I better make it interesting. A friend of mine actually said to me, Dune is very dry. And considering it takes place in a desert, that's saying something. So yeah. I'm like, yeah. And I, I just can't stand a lot of the, oh, well, you just don't understand. I'm like, no, I understand it perfectly well. I just don't like it very much. Just because something is long and tedious and complicated doesn't mean it's deep and meaningful the u.s tax code is long and tedious and, and complicated that's not <laughs> deep and meaningful either well and like i brought up lord of the rings it's like okay the books are a bit tedious to get through peter jackson knew how to present those a, a, a movie's about yeah. a bunch of walking and as kevin smith even pointed out the fucking trees walk in that movie and, and you got three movies of a bunch of walking and they managed to make it entertaining because they sprinkled in some wars and shit in between there. But no, let's face it, down in its deep core, it's The Lord of the Rings is not a complicated fucking story. It's not. A bunch of guys going for a walk. <laughs> it isn't. It's a real easy story that's been expanded on so far, and maybe that's kind of the problem here. It's the opposite problem is you have a very complicated subject, and it's dry, for lack of a better way, <laughs> for so long in so many ways that when something happens and then it's like you're still just kind of like... You're done at that point because it's yeah. like you're, you're, you they lost you. <laughs> I blow something up. <laughs> Once in a while, you got to have something happen, you know, like, come on. They actually blow things up with nuclear bombs towards the end of the book, which you missed. Oh, right great. Anyway. You, <laughs> you, save, you save it toward the end. Great. Yeah. Yeah, right. no, but I have to say, though, that, uh, that uh, Herbert, he certainly did his world building, and I think that he did a pretty impressive um, uh, building up the world but the problem is that he had so many pages to do it in the book and it, the book does take some getting into i remember reading it myself but i thought it was like confusing and a bit difficult to read but i later saw that he wrote it in a really classical way he wrote it essentially 
in a kind of similar way that that a bunch of books were written like way ago like for instance dracula was written in a slightly similar way have you ever read Bram yeah. Stoker's dracula a long time ago, actually yeah yeah you know what's pretty cool about it people uh, give uh, give uh, shit to uh, found footage movies and hate on the blair witch project for starting the found footage genre but you actually have found footage in literature too because multiple books many many books dracula among them it's essentially a found footage book. You know what I'm talking about? It's like a collection of like letters and... Yeah, because Dracula is told not through a narrative, but basically you have like a bunch of letters and journal readings or journal entries placed in a row. I guess a case log would be a better... So you get the case log of various documents that you just read in order without there ever being a narrator. Right. It'd be like if you were a detective and you opened up the case file and just go through everything. That's kind of what the book is. That's what I was kind of getting to, yeah. Exactly. And that's kind of like found footage things. That was what Dracula was. And it's something similar with with Dune, because there you have like excerpts from so many other fictional books which are placed in there. And of course, then you have a narrative there as well. So there is a narrator. But in between there, and this is part of the world building that makes it so difficult to read because you then have like so many references to Muad'Dib and everything. And then it's like, well, who's this Irulan, whatever, who's written this and how many volumes and everything. And then, of course, you get that towards the end of the book and that's explained exactly who she is and why she has so much time to write books about Paul Atreides. If I'm not mistaken, the movie was more of a byproduct of the Star Wars craze. And this is another situation where you have my famous saying, or I think it's famous, where it's mixing chocolate and cheese. And (laughs) you've got something that shouldn't have been tried to be presented in one way. You had a director who was not on board with what the studio wanted for a vision. And his vision and the studio's vision clashed. From what I cut, and I'm going from a vague memory of the whole breakdown behind the scenes about this film because I know that's Dune is one of those movies where the making of the movie is almost as famous as the movie itself, like Apocalypse Now and shit like that. To where I, I that's my recollection is that's kind of what happened, if I'm not wrong in this, because they even tried to push toys and all kinds of other shit, did they not? Yeah, well, you're not entirely wrong, at least because. Dune was actually in development more than a decade before it was released. Development of Dune predated Star Wars. Development of Dune started in the mid-1970s. Alejandro Hodorowski basically deciding that uh, uh, I want for my next movie to be Dune because I have uh, the book is great. And then he assembled a team which was going to change Hollywood. If you haven't seen the documentary Hodorowsky's Dune. I highly recommend you check it out. No, that's, I, I, I want it, to. I've though. seen it actually. Yeah. 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 So I've it seen started it, yeah. up there, and how David Lynch's Dune eventually got made. That probably is to Star Wars. Yes. That's yeah. Because, that's what uh, the studio was pushing for this. Yeah. They wanted a Star Wars. Exactly, and they wanted it to be less than two hours or around two hours, and that was their problem. That's what destroyed the movie in my opinion because Dune is never in hell gonna translate to a two hour movie can't be done because what I was gonna say is yeah it should have been treated more like something like Lord of the Rings and less like Star Wars and from what I gathered was it Universal? You mean Universal I think it was? Universal were the distributor it was oh okay so it was Dino De Laurentiis wasn't it? Yes yeah okay Dino De Laurentiis the producers wanted more something like Star Wars to where they could sell the toys and all this other shit and he's like no I'm trying to adapt this fucking book into a movie and you want something completely different and that's where I said the whole mix of chocolate and cheese to where these are two things that should not be put together and if you read the original book then it's actually divided into three parts or three books within the book so the natural fit would have been to make a trilogy of movies exactly yeah. like the 2000 miniseries that had the right idea because that was uh three episodes of an hour and a half each and script wise they were pretty perfect visually and budget wise it's a completely different story but script wise they were spot on i only wish it was like possible 
to genetically splice the two versions. If you could take the the script for the Dune miniseries and then apply the actors and the effects and the set designs from the David Lynch movie to that script, that would have been perfect. Oh, and some of the actors from the TV series as well. Because I have to say, if you look at the visuals and especially the signs, sign-wise, that movie is really fantastic and i really really enjoyed the designs of it oh yeah it's very visceral yeah and that was one of the things that really that really got me when i was looking at it again like wow this is pretty amazing world building right here when you see the different planets there in the intro problem is if you haven't read the book and you just see the theatrical version you're gonna have a really hard time following yeah, the and that's story. unfortunate yeah it, that's really unfortunate but if you have that down and you just admire the differences between the worlds that you see. Because you have like this golden chamber of the emperor of the known universe. And then you cut to the wooden palace from the ocean planet where the Altraides belong. And presumably there must be woods there because it's all wooden. And then you have the industrial hellhole planet of the Harkonnens. Right. So, so yeah, it's like, uh, and it all feels lived in. It's like the same kind of world building that you have in Blade Runner. So I'm just like a huge fan of visuals, and like he just went all out. And I think that Hodorowsky's Dune would have been probably the more interesting movie, certainly more interesting visually. But still, I think that Lynch did a damn fine job in bringing the visuals to screen. And it's such a shame that they could not make three movies. Right. Or better yet, just release one movie, but make it three, four hours long. So you could tell the fucking story <laughs> that needed to be told. And they really fucked themselves in the ass right. that way. Because now the movie is remembered as a flop. Right. When it should have been remembered as a really tremendously ambitious movie. But unfortunately failed due to studio interference. I think it's getting to that level where Blade Runner kind of is. It's getting to, to where it's not so much seen as a flop anymore, so much as just an undiscovered, misunderstood movie at its time. And I think like people like you, the people who are kind of pushing it back out there again so people do kind of recognize it. And I'll tell you up front, without only seeing 30 minutes of the movie, you can show me a picture from the movie Dune, and I can probably tell you it's from Dune. Because you're right, that 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 movie was very well designed and and it has a good vision to it. But, and I kind of get what you're saying because I have a feeling that's what's going to happen with it coming up here. Is I'm going to be like, you know, this version was closer to the book, script wise, but I like the visuals of the original better. And like you know, like you said, like a lot of the actors and so on and so forth. I have a feeling that's what's going to happen when I get into this. Yeah, um, that's what I was really reminded of when I saw the more complete version of it. Like how much more detail of the world building is explained in a much better way and it's how like oh yeah i see that now because that's the thing that there are things in the movie which are not in the first novel but they came in the later novels and then it's uh, it was reincorporated into the first movie like for instance the uh, spacing guild navigate they didn't appear until the second novel but they're in the first movie i found out later somebody somebody turns himself into a worm i was like okay i'm done that's it i'm out <laughs> Yeah, I haven't read that book, so I wouldn't know, but uh, but there are many things that come in later. Like, for instance, the disease in uh, Baron Harkonnen's space. That is something which you saw in the movie. There's no reference to that in the first book, but it's explained in the later ones. No, that's that's also, also something that is made explicit in the miniseries, how Baron Harkonnen is the grandfather of Paul Atreides. It's called Herpes. <laughs> Yeah, space herpes, and that's also how he uh, how he got it. Actually, it was sexually transmitted. He got it from uh, basically raping the Bene Gesserit, who was the advisor of the Emperor, the one we see who gives Paul Atreides like this box where he has to stick his hand in. That's his grandmother. That's the mother of his mother, and she's the one who passed that STD, the Star Trek Discovery, along to Baron Harkonnen. <laughs> So you have like so many things which are in the novels, and that's actually kind of implied in the extended version of the movie. But again, it's completely absent from the theatrical cut. So you have so much world building there, which is absent. It's such a crying shame. I will give it up to Virginia Madsen. She still looks pretty good for, what, she's about 54, 53, 54? Jeez. Ah, I haven't oh. seen her recently. Well, I'm looking at a few pictures of her. She was, she, was on an episode, she was on an episode of Voyager, and I was like, damn, I know her from somewhere. And it's like, wait a minute. 
And then I saw a special guest, Virginia Madsen, like, oh, no way! That's who that is! Uh, do you think that we're going to get a new Dune movie? Do you think it's going to happen? Uh, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It wouldn't surprise me. They've tried everything else. Hey, let's try Dune again. Who owns the rights to it now? The rights have been handed to Legendary. There's no issue with them. They are owned by the Frank Herbert estate, and they give the rights to whoever wants to make a movie about them. So there's no problem there. There's no one who owns the movie rights permanently. They can only be licensed. And right now, Legendary has the license. Oh, yeah. Then we'll get a movie within the next three years or so, guaranteed. There'll be something started, yeah. They attached Denis Villeneuve to the project. Because this screams yeah. franchise, so they're going to try. Uh, well, I would think so, but there's one re- one thing that uh, leads me to think that maybe they won't. Because there's something in the story that has become much more relevant since it was written. Like it's, You have like some pieces of literature that just become more and more relevant as time goes on for, for different ways, right? Uh, like, have you noticed this with uh, with Dune? That you have the Emperor of the known universe and the one who ultimately rules Dune, Shaddam, which sounds a lot like Saddam Hussein. Um, and the planet Dune, what's it called? What's the real name for the planet? Arrakis. Arrakis. So you have that Saddam <laughs> of Iraq. Well, that, it's yeah. been fought long enough that they <clears throat> take advantage of that now. I yeah, oh, and the, yeah and, but, and, but it gets worse. It gets and they're worse. on, yeah, and the the, the 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 Fremen were on a jihad. Yeah, yeah, they're on a jihad. Not only that, like, what's the real story? Basically, there you have these religious fundamentalists and their prophet and prophecies and everything else. And what are they doing? Well, they basically have this insurgency against a technologically superior invader who wants their natural resources. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can see the similarities there. No (laughs) doubt. They could go two ways about it. They're either A, they'll turn around and excise anything that's remotely close to that and they'll rename it all, and it'll just be renamed and redesigned just a little bit so it's not close, or they'll actually get and may even cast a lot of Iraqi actors and stuff like that. That's very possible. Yeah, I can see both. I can see that's Either they are going to completely abandon the whole thing because of it, or they're going to see that, yeah, okay, you know what? This makes the whole thing all the more current. So let's really do this now and go all the way. I think one of the two. If you like this video, then please hit that subscribe button. Due to recent changes made by YouTube, we also encourage all of our subscribers, both new and old, to please hit that bell icon next to the subscribe button as well, so you will be notified when new videos are uploaded. Be sure to check back for news and analysis of the happenings and corporate politics behind the scenes of your favorite genre movies, as well as explorations of your favorite characters and their backgrounds and context here at Midnight's Edge After Dark. the story in that world aren't very interesting to begin with. And let's consider for a moment that back in 1965, Frank Herbert couldn't get this thing published in the first place. He had to go through a publisher named Chilton. For those of you unfamiliar with that name, they primarily publish auto repair manuals. So to sum up, yeah, Dune, not a fan. Now, I understand why there are some who are fixated on bringing this book to the big screen, especially now with the success of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Naturally, they see any long-running property as an opportunity to turn it into a cinematic universe, and no doubt that's where the bell went off. Even I was guilty of this a few videos back when I was talking about Hollywood remakes. At the time, however, I hadn't even made an attempt to actually read Dune. Now that I have, while I'm not against it per se, I'm of the persuasion that we don't need to go down this road yet again. And yet Hollywood doesn't seem to agree. They still think there's a movie somewhere in this. Back in the 70s, Alejandro Jodorowsky was the first to attempt to make a cinematic version of Dune. His vision at the time was deemed too expensive as the original script was said to be over 14 hours long. In 1984, David Lynch's version of Dune was lambasted as one of the worst movies of that year. With a budget of $40 million, the film only made $30 million. Film critic Gene Siskel said of Dune, Some of its special effects are cheap, surprisingly cheap, because this film cost a reported $40 to $45 million. Keep in mind that Siskel was saying this about a film that was released only one year after Return of the Jedi. 
which comparatively had a budget of $32 million. The film was so poorly received that director David Lynch demanded his name removed from any future releases. On many television screenings of the film, his name is replaced by director Alan Smithy, a Hollywood pseudonym that is normally associated with directors who are embarrassed by their work and wish not to sully their reputation. In 2008, the rights to Dune landed with Paramount, and Hancock, Friday Night Lights, and Battleship director Peter Berg was brought in to make a big screen adaptation. After a year, he was out, and Taken director Pierre Morel took up the project in 2010. A year later in 2011, Paramount dropped the idea altogether. All of this brings us to now. For all intents and purposes, it seems that many are so hell-bent to make a movie out of Dune that they are ignoring the one glaring problem with the source material, which is this. There was an episode of Archer where Pam went back to her hometown for her sister Edie's wedding. Edie, being naturally mean-spirited and never having treated Pam with any sort of respect, said that Pam looked like 10 pounds of shit in a 5-pound bag. That in another... Yeah, about 800, actually. Roughly about 800. Yeah, I might pick it up again at some point, but I was just like, I, I can't do this anymore. I just can't. <laughs> yeah. How far did you get into it story-wise? Like, what was the last thing that happened? The last thing I remember happening is Paul Artridis kills the other guy in the fight with the Fremen. Oh, okay. Uh, so we're really early. So basically, uh, this would be in book two, after they have just escaped the Harkonnens. And he and his mother are fleeing and they get into the Fremens and they have to fight this one guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, that's how far it. you got. That's it, yeah. That's I I couldn't do any more. I just couldn't do it. <laughs> but like basically I said, you got like half an hour into the movie. That's it? Oh for <laughs> God's sake. One of the things I, I kept I keep saying now is that it, because all their technology was replaced by people who just consumed the spice and do the same jobs as, as their computers used to do. I was like, okay, so what's the message here? Drugs make you smart? I mean... No, actually, I can tell you what the message was there because you know what I did this weekend? What did you do? I saw Dune, but, here's the but, I did not see the shortened two hour version that was in theaters and that you have likely seen. And I also didn't see the three-hour TV version. And this is the version that David Lynch disowned. And the reason he disowned it was that he wasn't in charge of putting the deleted scenes back in. But mostly it was because of the prologue. Because the, um, the movie had the problem that people didn't really understand it. There was too much going on in too short a time. So they made this animated prologue an animate that is pushing it. Really, what it was was a bunch of stills. Kind of like what we do here at Midnight's Edge. Mm -hmm. But they had a budget, so they had no excuse. Well, we do it to avoid copyright, too, yeah. <laughs> well, exactly. They had they didn't have that, uh, that excuse because they had someone just narrating over pictures. So basically, they made like this introduction that you can find on YouTube. Basically, that just reads quickly the story of what has happened in the Dune universe and gives you the basic setting. That shell encapsulates the problem with Dune. There's far too much material to squeeze into a two and a half hour movie, and most of that material doesn't translate well because it's primarily the world building. Making that into a movie would be pointless unless you were making a BBC style documentary, Planet Arrakis. By the time you strip away the world building, you're left with the politics and the Space Jesus story, and uh, you know what? Fuck it, I'm not interested. The point is this. There's not a good movie here, no matter how hard you try, because it was never intended to be turned into a movie. You can, however, make a decent television series out of this, a la Game of Thrones or The Walking Dead. Back in the 70s and 80s, you were really handcuffed to the movie format if you wanted to do something as big as Game of Thrones or Dune. Now you have things like HBO, Netflix, and even Amazon Prime. That opens up a lot of avenues for longer form storytelling. That's where you can take your time to develop characters in a way a two and a half hour movie doesn't allow you to. Dune as a television series has already been tried. Back in 2000, the Sci-Fi Channel made Dune, and three years later, Children of Dune. Both series were the highest rated programs ever to be broadcast on the Sci-Fi Channel, and both series even won an Emmy. So, can you make Dune into a movie? No. Can you make Dune into a television series? Probably. So do us all a favor and let's give this a pass as far as a movie is concerned this time. You can thank me later. Next episode, something completely different. Maybe. I haven't decided yet. See you next time. Yeah, I know the clock is ticking, but the meds are gonna kick in. When my pilot light shines, pilot light shines, pilot light shining bright. Unfortunately, Rob and I have gotten to about the same place in the movie about two or three times each, and I just, I, I, I want to get into it, but it just, 
<laughs> I don't know what it is about the movie itself that turns me off. I don't know. I just donated my my copy of the, of the book to the my local public library actually. So I'm Did you finish oh, it? <laughs> no, no I didn't. I How said How far I, I, did you get into it? 550 pages. Of I said 800 of, 900 1000, I don't remember. Yeah. Hello and welcome to Midnight's Edge After Dark. Now, you're probably familiar with Rob Gallo, the voice of Midnight's Edge, but if you don't know, he does have his own YouTube page. So after this video, why don't you go on over there and check it out and subscribe. This video you're about to see is actually on his page, but then following the video is a brand new roundtable follow-up with Rob, Andre, and myself, Tom, talking about Dune. So enjoy Rob's video and then stick around afterwards for a little extra. Uh, really? We're going to try this again. In case some of you hadn't heard, on November 21st, it was announced that Legendary Pictures had acquired the rights to Frank Herbert's science fiction... Um, masterpiece dune more recently on february 1st several outlets reported that arrival and sicario director delis villeneuve had been attached to the project now look i ordinarily don't like begrudging what someone else likes or enjoys you like what you like and after many years of people including family members waiting for my taste to change i'm not about to give anybody shit for what they like with that being said are we really going to go through with this again this is going to be the third attempt at making a movie out of this book and i really can't help but think that they're completely and utterly misguided in their efforts I've been trying to read the first novel of Dune, and I have to say that I really don't see a movie here. Now, I should say that I'm not finished with it yet. This has been an absolute chore to read. I'm roughly 500 pages in, and with about 300 to go, it's not getting any better. It's slow, it's tedious, the characters have very little depth to them, and the story doesn't seem to have any real point other than the young son Paul Artreides being some sort of space Jesus. And please spare me the whole, well, it's just too cerebral for you. Just because something is long, tedious, boring, and drawn out doesn't mean it's deep. It's really saying something that Dune is a very dry book, especially considering that it takes place in a desert. For all the world building that many town is being phenomenal, it doesn't help much that if the characters and And it's really quick, it's really rushed, it's not all that impressive, and then you go into the story, and there's more scenes added back in, which David Lynch had no control over. So he disowned the movie, which is why the TV version of the movie is directed by Alan Smithy, yes. which was the usual name used for directors who for one reason or another did not want to be associated with their movie. So he was fine with the theatrical cut because even if it wasn't the movie he made, it was a cut that he could kind of stand behind. But the TV cut was made without his involvement, so he took his name off that. And then he has refused to go back to it any time since, despite being offered to do so several times. However, fans have done the job anyway, because a bunch of deleted scenes, even many that weren't included in the original, or rather the TV version of Dune, has been reinserted into various fan edits. And this weekend, the version of Dune I saw was the fan edit called Dune, the third stage edition. And that is basically a fan edit which has added nearly all scenes back into the movie and not just added them back into the movie they've completed the effects for instance a problem with the tv version was that in the reinstated scenes the eyes weren't blue so that the characters would have the blue eyes in one scene and then there would be like 10 minutes of a deleted scene with normal eyes and then they would continue with their blue eyes again another reason why david lynch disowned the television version but here they have manually completed the effects so it's blue eyes and everything throughout, music added in, it's really, really well done. And the thing that caught me with this was, okay, this version is now a hell of a lot longer. You know how long it is? Well, it's gotta be at least four hours. I was gonna say if the other one was three, yeah. The TV version is about three hours. This is three and a half hours long. By contrast, the movie version, the theatrical version, the one that you have seen, was two hour, 10 minutes, something yeah. like that. And just like imagine that that means that more than an hour's worth of footage